Ailey, I want to really welcome you here tonight for the book presentation of Tension in Space, uh, Pichler, Trauchen, Architects. Thank you all for joining. When I came back from Ghana end of September last year, everyone told me that I missed the most beautiful event, which was the celebration of the 30th anniversary of Pichler, Trauchen, Architects at the former Center Depot. That was also when you launched the impressive monograph we feature today. It was clear that we would want to present and discuss this amazing publication here at IOA at one point as well, which is happening this evening. Several people have been involved in the becoming of this book who are part of or close to IOA. Such as you, Matthias, as our professor of history and architecture, being its co-editor. The beautiful classic graphic design is done by Birbo Nadim, who is also responsible for our fresh, current IOA graphic ID. And then there is you, Hannes, as co-founder and principal of Pichler Traupan Architects, founded in 1992. Same year you started teaching at the School of Architecture. From 2000 onward you did that with Saha Diet for 15 years, then with Sishima, and for the last four years at Studio Diaz Morena Garcia Grinder. Even if the architectural agenda of these architects and studios, studio heads couldn't have been more diverse, it always felt right having you teaching with them. And I thought about why this is the case and draw the analogy to the architecture you practice as Pichler and Trautmann. There is a strong passion for form and a geometrical claim, which was central in Sarah's teaching. There is the search for other typological responses to a design task, which Sishima cultivated in her studio. And there is the non-dogmatic, socially, culturally engaged approach in your architecture, which is the agenda of Christina and Efren. The Pichla Traubmann architecture comprises all that and speaks its very own language. My favorite quote from the very first pages of the book is, Suchness and otherness are inherent in our work. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that and hand over the word to you, Gutun, guiding us through the evening. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction and also a warm welcome from my side. Uh, welcome to our book presentation and to be more precise to an architectural monograph. Very impressive one, as we heard. And it was published at the occasion of the 30th anniversary. And my task now, as I was told, is to shortly introduce you, which might not seem to be imp uh, important, uh, not imp important, but maybe you, uh, everybody is known here. But shortly, uh, Matthias, history of professor here at the institute. And what I would like to point out in your case, you have been the editor of Architectur Aktuell for 23 years. So you are really used on a daily basis to bring um, information on contemporary architecture between two covers into physical, into a physical medium, which you also did with that book. You published widely. You have also been the curator um, of many exhibitions, like last year with the Josef Hoffmann exhibition, and you did also a, mon a monograph on, on Josef Hoffmann. So you are very um, let's say, very used, um, bring information into physical medium. Christian Kühn is, teaches at the um, uh, Technical University for over 30 years, I guess. And I... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also as a professor since 2001. And what I would like to point out with um, Christian is that I would say you are one of our most important critical voice in the field of architecture. He has early on uh, published in architectural magazines, in daily newspapers such as the Presse, which you continue until today. So our, our critical voice in the field of architecture. You also published widely and you have been 
um, you hold many uh, positions in the non-academic field as well. And you also did a monograph on um, Anton Schweighofer. So with Matthias and with Christian, we have two professionals here in the field of book production. And I guess that's really important uh, uh, for our dis uh, discussion tonight. Then we have our protagonists. Um, also, no introduction would be needed, but I, I try to give a short one. Um, very important, you met here at the University of Applied Arts in, and you did you studied with Wilhelm Holzbauer. And I think it was during the diploma that you decided to found an architecture office in 1992, what we heard. And since then you were very successful in running this office. Your <coughs> scope of work is amazingly you are doing small scale, uh, large scale, you're doing a lot of, of competitions and you, um, in 2019, I guess, you got two new partners, so two junior partners, they are with us tonight. I, I hope I get your names <coughs> now right, it's Wolfgang Bind yeah, and Patos Lewandowski. And I think you guess, uh, I guess you're about 30 people, right, your office, approximately. Plus, minus. Yeah. Yeah. What I would like to point out in your case, and I hope <coughs> we have the opportunity to discuss that, you have strong interests um, beyond architecture, or let's, say, let's say in addition to architecture. With you, uh, Christoph, it's, um, you are very much into natural science and you into theology and philosophy, you even studied uh, theology. And I have actually the first part um, of the quote Babel gave us. I would like to, um, if, I, if I find it, but you described your practice very well on the first page of the book. You said you're working in a, um, in a field of tension which is the practice of building on the one hand, and on the other hand, you would like to, you have the desire to convey your um, theory and your, your, um, your uh, yeah, let's say your, your theory, uh, and to co convey that through your architecture. So I hope we can somehow discuss this later on. So now we, the book, I should introduce the book too not only the, uh, the people. This is the Opus Magnum, 397 pages. Uh, and it is really, as uh, Perbel said, nicely, uh, wonderfully done in terms of content and in terms of uh, design. We have, on the one hand, stunning images, one really can say uh, color images, we have full page images, uh, images over two, over two pages. And we have um, a lot of essays, so it's um, in, set in a context. And the essays are um, not only out of the field of architecture, but we have a, a German scholar, which is actually the son of um, Hannes. We have a physicist and we have, um, an, I would say a very uh, in then intelligent um, interview with Anna Socek. And then comes, um, and uh, Matthias managed to do that, the really uh, large work of Bichler and Trautmann, all the project. Matthias organized and managed to organize into seven topics, which was not an easy uh, task, I guess. And then, last but not least, um, a stunning catalog of works where you have, yeah, it's really impressive. <laughs> so this is the book, and so we could dive into the discussion. And I would like to pose the first question to the two of you, because, uh, how is it, I'm always sitting next to the audience, uh, next to, not, not next to the audience, is it okay? Yeah. So. Um, you know, you, you decided um, on a book, and we are speaking now in, in architecture uh, of the first digital turn, of the second digital turn, we are using artificial intelligence. And you yourself, in your office, 
you used very cutting edge tools from the beginning on. You used CRT, you used early on um, the BIM. So you could have chosen any other media for your uh, 30th anniversary, a digital whatever, a metaverse. No, you decided on a very traditional typology of a book. And that's my question for you. Why a book? <laughs> <laughs> I basically I think the, a, a, a book is 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 a how can you say a transmitter of culture for so so many years and uh, I mean it's a, it's a very I think important way to 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 express different thoughts and and ideas or understanding of yourself and things like that 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 are kind of uh, Put into a, into a format of of, of let's say of, of of a printed thing, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's also maybe we have a bit. Uh, uh, a I would not say diverse, but uh, a nuanced uh, approach to 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 the book as a format as well. I mean, as as you said, I'm, I'm, I'm I've studied theology, and for me, it was always, of course, important. A book is like. Is, is like a pirate, but <laughs> this is our own pirate, maybe, somehow. But you had so uh, similar ideas, <laughs> we will discuss so this it, in a minute. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we can discuss this, so that means uh, a book uh, that is from the very, very first beginning of when people understood uh, themselves with a, with a cultural message, I would say, then it was al always casted into a book. Mm -hmm. And so we thought this, 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 I mean, we, of course we are, we are very connected to contemporary digital tools. I mean, this is clear, as you said, mm -hmm. for many years. But nevertheless, we wanted to have something that, that you can have in hand. And it's also, it's also uh, a way to, uh, to, to, to get a quick survey. And you can, you can immediately kind of browse through all the, the pages and, and get, a, get a different kind of, uh, how could I say, um, combination of, of different things and references in within that I think probably is n is not so easily done in the in in, in, in other media. But mm -hmm. okay, this is this is somehow. Yeah. But maybe Christoph will want to say something. Yeah, there, there's this saying by Victor Hugo that the book will kill the building. So I think the book <laughs> didn't kill the building. <laughs> And so also the book won't be killed. Yeah. So I think the book is something very physical, which you can hold in your hands and which is something, I think, something lasting. Mm -hmm. And we know that digital devices change all the time and we don't know how they are going to be stored. Still an open question, but the book will last. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think it's something uh, uh, which is physical and which has some aspirations and I also love to hold a book in my hands to smell the smell of a book <laughs> so I, I think th it's uh, something also close to the uh, to uh, the non-digital uh, art of, of architecture actually and of building and in a way, for us, it was also kind of close to our way of, of designing by doing models. So we used uh, the cardboard uh, cover, for instance. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the... A lot of models are exactly made out of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a reference to your work. So I was going uh, to say in, uh, with you, one can say uh, the building, oh, no, the book enriches the building not kills the building. So I would uh, reverse it yeah. in, mm -hmm. in, in, in that case. Yes, because they too, they still build models, they sketch, and then everything goes into the digital sphere, not in a linear, uh, in a, in a linear way, but back and forth. And that's the reference to, to your work, right. the cover. Definitely, yeah. 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 As well as the cover, also that, as Christoph said, it's a kind of a material. Mm -hmm. And it's of course it's 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 not an it's not a digital image. So it is something that is somehow also handcrafted as it is is done. 
and as we as we we still want to do architecture in a physical way, not just in a well, let's say digital imagery. Mm -hmm. Imagery. So we still think that that this way to understand how to transform and to transmit culture is an is an important thing that that we that we build architecture and mm -hmm. that we also kind of I would say craft books or, or produce books. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and we, we of course we as we said we, we use the digital tools but more as a kind of an intermediate state status uh, how to how to control the design technology uh, te techniques and the design process which is which is great. I mean also some people of our office are around and they, they are really, really skillful with all those things. But we s we still think that this is a uh, this is an intermediate status, and finally it should it should be built and, and in a similar way that we think is also a book mm -hmm. like we can that something is materialized. Mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. And the book forces you to think very precisely, yeah. because it's n not hovering in space and you can mm -hmm. connect mm -hmm. each point with another point. Mm -hmm. It ha you have to. Uh, build up a kind of choreography uh, and the pages are in kind of uh, it, it's it's a two-dimensional space but they are still in a linear row so it, it, the story you want to tell you have to tell very you have to think about how you want to tell it you have to be precise and to get to the point in the end it's mm -hmm. like with a, uh, with a building <coughs> or with a competition or whatever at a certain point uh, you have to be clear on it Matthias, uh, is there, was there some re well, no, remark? I think, yeah? I think, no, no, I think, so I think it's interesting that for, to produce the book we, still, we, we already use digital tools, which is clear, but finally, as I tried to say, the, the, the outcome, the result, then is something you, you, can, something you can hold in hand, I think. I just wanted to, to maybe just to mention Christian is also is not just a critic and writer, he's also he represented in a, with a I, it's an article with for an sure. article yeah, of Christian yeah, Kühn yeah. in the book um, yeah. after he's around I just want Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right. I, for, I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> an ar article on architecture yeah. and geom geometry. We will get to that later. But if you have any remarks on books, I I'll Loved all these remarks very much because you speak of the death of the book and you know of uh, um, not of not a lasting media uh, medium. And now we heard that uh, it's still valid and in in it in, in reaches us. Matthias, I wanted to change over to the concept concept phase of the book because it was a very comprehensive one because. Uh, your clients, they were very precise with their ideas and very demanding also, as I heard. Like, uh, there were meetings where Hannes brought, um, what did you bring, the palimpsest, I think you, you brought, and uh, exegesis. So you had all kinds of very demanding ideas. Um, and different uh, formats of paper and different uh, sizes of of paper, and you had to bring this um, very demanding making of into a physical book. So, I, uh, if, could you tell us about the concept phase of of this book? As it was a very special, one, a specific one. The taming of the architect. Right? <laughs> 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 exactly. so first, I'd like to say that uh, uh, designing and producing an architect's monograph is uh, a big adventure and uh, usually it's completely underestimated uh, as well by the architects uh, and uh, sometimes also by the makers or the editors and the authors and um, most architects uh, usually do not produce more than uh, one or maximum two monographs on their office work, one after 30 years and the next one after 60 years and uh, then we'll have the complete work. So there is not much uh, professional experience in bookmaking that you can um, 
meet, usually, there are always exceptions to that rule, um, in architectural offices. And uh, therefore, uh, my role as an editor consisted more of a sort of coaching and, um, and uh, inspiring kind of uh, teamwork. Uh, the whole endeavor is, of course, uh, a big teamwork. And I like very much what you said, Christoph. It's like planning a house. Uh, that's exactly the process. Uh, all involved persons have certain consulting functions or uh, just simple material um, delivering functions. Uh, such as uh, image editing, etc., proofreading, layout design, etc., etc. And um, as it is uh, uh, a big uh, adventure, uh, taking time, uh, so how long did we work on it? Two years or something. Yes. Yeah. So it's not uh, very much, but okay. If you no, if you no. dare. Uh, <laughs> producing your architecture monograph, start early. Um, <laughs> it's, it takes twice as long as you think it will, uh, because uh, during the making of the book, you will find out, oh, we need this, oh, we need that, and that would be uh, a good offer to contribute to this topic, uh, and it grows uh, during the work, uh, and then you have the translations, if it's uh, biting well, Etc. Etc. So um, that's another important uh, aspect, and I'd like to express my thanks. Also, it was a really good work uh, with the architects and the authors, uh, and also the office of Peter and Taubmann, Renate de Blümer, uh, who had uh, the most challenging um, job, which is usually also completely underestimated. This is um, a body of work of. 300 or how many um, entries do we have yeah, in the... Approximately. Yeah, yeah. I mean 300, so, think of that. Um, and she had to put together the basic data of these uh, 300 projects plus uh, a photograph uh, or a rendering. Um, and uh, that's quite a job as well. Uh, not to speak of the daily communication, etc., etc. So there are many people involved, uh, also the graphic designer, Christoph Nadin, it was also a pleasure to work with him, and the translators and the proofreaders that I mentioned before. Um, yeah, that's the technical aspect of all. But as for the um, concept of a book, um, what is a book? That's the basic question. Um, what can it provide? Uh, what can it deliver? Uh, what do you expect, uh, which functions, which effects, uh, which impact uh, do you expect from a book, from an architecture monograph uh, especially, which is uh, still more uh, a very, which is really a, a very, very special kind of book. And uh, as it is uh, such a super special kind of uh, book with a rather small uh, target group, you really have to uh, get clear um, about uh, your target group, so you will uh, never produce a bestseller uh, that's out of reach. Um, I don't know of any uh, architectural monograph that sold, I don't know, more, more than thousands or two. How many? Okay, so six thousand. Six thousand. Yes. Well, this was the one bestseller I know. Uh, which book right. of Baumschlager Eva then? Which book of the? For me, the book. <laughs> 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 but that's, so that that's um, twenty years. Um, yeah. And they ago. produced how many of this? Uh, I was told that it was six thousand or eight thousand. Okay. Possible. And they sold. Possible. Possible. Wow. Yes, 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 because they are so great at copying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think so. It was a study in copying. Mm -hmm. yeah, just for the audience, uh, just edition. for the audience, uh, Matthias. Usually, architecture books the, they produce thousand one hundred yes. to yeah. two thousand. That's the scope exactly. usually. And so six thousand is. Sold. Hmm? Everybody knows these exactly. one thousand one hundred copies will never be sold. <laughs> yes. But they were. But they are given away. 
So and that's, that's uh, an underestimated function as well, um, which you have to calculate in advance, of course, uh, as you will never sell these 1,000 or 2,000 uh, printed books. And you have to produce this amount um, because under 500 uh, copies, you're doing with laser prints and binding it. Uh, and the common understanding is that uh, over 500, you do an offset book printing. So, um, well, then you decide uh, about the print run, and that would be then uh, 1,000, 2,000, and um, you will sell on the book market of a typically uh, central or general European architecture practice about, I don't know, several hundred uh, copies, also depending on the cover, uh, which is, uh, um, uh, of course, a marketing aspect and um, a, uh, a, uh, an aspect of advertising. And uh, usually architects prefer to, to have a, quite an artistic uh, cover design, but uh, that's uh, not really the expectation of a generally interested um, architecture, interested um, reader, um, who usually prefers books with a brilliant uh, uh, full color, detail of one sexy building. Uh, that's another aspect. I do not judge, uh, both is legitimate of course, but you have to be aware of it and you should not have uh, uh, unrealistic expectations. And there are of course many exceptions to that rule. I'm getting more positive later. <laughs> but uh, like Baumschlager Ebele, like Corbusier, like Chipperfield and all those people, they uh, sell maybe the classics, uh, we could say, are selling several thousand uh, copies. But on the other hand, you do not produce an, a monograph on your own office or your own work uh, just for selling. You are producing it also for yourself and for your environment or your professional environment. And it's extremely important. Um, it could be important. You will tell us uh, what the actual impact uh, was um, for the office itself uh, to clarify uh, your own work. What did we do in the past 20, 30 years? Um, which developments can we observe looking back because usually in everyday practice there is not, no time at all to reflect on uh, what did we do in comparison to last year, what did we change. And uh, as you put together all the material, um, this amounts to, to a clear uh, view of yourself basically or of your own work. And that like yes. yeah, yeah. possibly could help. Therefore, I think it would be so important to uh, come to the concept. Of, uh, therefore, it would be so important to come to the concept yeah. of the book okay. because that reflects your work, that uh, gives, uh, reflects yeah. the, uh, the ideas. And so that's the content aspect. Mm -hmm. Well, that depends a lot uh, on um, the chemistry between uh, the, the architects and the editor. Uh, of course, we had uh, a perfect chemistry, Hannes being an old friend of mine, etc. And the new partners was a pleasure to work with you. Thank you again. And um, that was developed in a common effort. And my basic approach was um, that was uh, the topic of thinking, as I call it. Um, that's for me the basis of everything of each book, of each uh, exhibition concept, of each uh, website article, of basically everything, all kinds of communication, even as I talk to you, I have one topic and that's the book. And um, you have to focus on that. Um, so if you want to convey a message, you have to define it. And uh, that sounds easy. Uh, the message is the cool buildings of those cool architects, but of course it's not that easy 
Um, I mean, that's just boring, uh, listing their work uh, from number one to 300. So you cannot organize a book in a chronological order. Okay, that's really boring. And you cannot organize a book, uh, for example, an architecture monograph, for example, um, in, uh, in a typological order. Uh, residential buildings, uh, office buildings, industrial, etc. That's very boring too. Uh, but you find that sometimes, uh, especially in corporate offices, I just had one in my hands a couple of days ago, you can't look at that. So, so super boring. Um, and therefore, you have to find um, more exciting topics. And what are those topics? Uh, those topics are not the chronology, obviously, not the typology, not the technology as well, uh, not geography. Um, and, uh, I would say this is my personal approach. Other people would, maybe Kristen uh, is uh, okay. following a different strategy in his editing work. But uh, I always try to find or to define um, uh, topics that are uh, interdisciplinary and they are, that are not uh, everyday um, topics um, and uh, that um, express um, as much of the general attitude um, of your subject um, as possible. So it's better to define only three or four or five topics, uh, but uh, those few with uh, a reasonable or a convincing content, if you read them and or look at the images, that's the next thing. Uh, the images uh, have to support uh, those topics, of course. That's what we are trying in, in those uh, topic chapters. And um, they have to be convincing. So uh, there is always a risk also in defining topics uh, because um, if they are not really to the point, um, that's uh, that's embarrassing a little bit. So you you the readers will realize immediately if this guy uh, makes up uh, things. The editor, I mean. Um, and if, uh, if the definition of the topic is kind of artificial. So what we did is we defined uh, how seven. many were that? Did Two, seven. Seven four, topics. Or six, seven topics. <laughs> we can discuss about that later. Um, that um, were for all of us more or less representative of the work or the strategy um, of the architects, like uh, poles and fields like continuity, ambivalence, folding, landscape, things like that. Cross-disciplinary topics that express some uh, of the main um, directions of their approach. Well, mm -hmm. I talked enough now, I think. No, not enough, but I just would like to ask Christian, as you published mm -hmm. also many books and you are very much into this profession, what about what's your opinion about um, doing a monography in the chronological sense versus the mm -hmm. content sense? <coughs> you mentioned that I did one monography yes. on Anton Schweighofer, mm -hmm. um, who was professor at the TU mm -hmm. and who was retiring at that moment. He was close to 70. And he wanted a monography that would capture his whole intellectual cosmos. <laughs> he would leave the university and then this has to be structured in some way. And our idea was to uh, organize interviews with more or less interesting people. I remember Otto Kapfinger, Walter Kamoster, all entirely men. Mm -hmm. Otto Kapfinger wrote also and contributed yes, so also another There are continuities. Mm -hmm. And um, th these interviews were heavily edited and half of the images were from other architects. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure, yes, because yes, this yes, was the intellectual cosmos yeah. to, to relay and this was another intention, because in your case, you probably will be able to do the, the next book on your work in 20 years' time. But for Schreikhofer, this was the final book in some way, which made it rather hard. And 
Uh, I would recommend to choose dead architects. Sorry, we're still <laughs> alive. <laughs> <this good>? <laughs> <laughs> Makes things a lot easier. Um, and uh, Schweighofer's, if you open the book, the first sentence was, to me, as a quote from Schweighofer, to me, freedom is more important than harmony. And so you can imagine that there was tension in this project. <laughs> also well, tension, you had a different like kind of tension. tension. Yeah. In the project, <laughs> and we did a very boring organization of the project description. So the book had two parts. The first part were these discourses, which were, I think, are still a very interesting intellectual history. And this is almost half of the book. And the other half is a chronological order of project descriptions with a very good selection of uh, images and with the, the joke that we selected, one photograph that showed Schweighofer at that time, and this makes it very funny, you can um, hunt down the Schweighofer image in each of the project descriptions. Okay. And um, so this was an experience for me, so I... Uh, this is Would a you do it again? Uh, yes, with dead architect. <laughs> 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 It had some, uh, th this is more or less a joke, but I think you have to do different books. If the architect is alive, it's a sort of discourse with a living person. Uh, if the architect is not alive anymore, it's a discourse with a person of history. And it's, um, both approaches have their, their value. Yeah. What would, would you do with a um, uh, living ar architect who wants a chronological monography? Um, I think this is not yet a concept to produce a chronological uh, monography. I think what you did in the book with the concept is one of the approaches you can take. And uh, I was not so deeply involved in the project, but I know that you discussed these headlines. Mm -hmm. And because if you have only seven headlines, this is something from theology probably. The number <laughs> seven. <laughs> is it? Yeah, no, it, changes, no. it changes a lot if yeah. you just uh -huh. change the headline. And so I, I could live very well with the headlines, and I found my approach from geometry we presented there. So it was mm -hmm. uh, a very interesting task. Yeah, the essays, the author's contributions are another chapter we could discuss later. Mm -hmm. Selecting them, but giving them, of course, also the freedom to contribute uh, aspects that they consider relevant in the work of uh, the architects or in general, so we agreed on the liberty, which was really good, um, that um, the essay contributions by expert, outside expert authors from various uh, disciplines and fields um, should not or could not only um, focus on uh, the work of Pichler and Trauten, that of course also was also allowed, some of them or most of them also did that, but uh, that they um, position their work or the topics their work or the questions uh, this work raises into a larger scientific or cultural uh, context. And therefore, we invited uh, one uh, uh, theoretic physicist, is that the correct term, physica, mm -hmm. um, to, um, to explain a little bit uh, about contemporary uh, theories in that uh, field because uh, the architects were dealing a lot uh, with those things and that was really interesting how he found out parallels uh, between uh, strategies uh, in the natural sciences and this uh, creative uh, work and so on so um, that was really a pleasure um, and enlightening also and I think it's in terms of content it's uh, productive also you will tell us if it uh, inspired you in some way but uh, I think it fit in there Christian, sorry you? I interrupted you no 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 I, ha I have a um, question your article is on um, architecture and geometry was this a topic you have chosen or was did you have the liberty or was it given to you I had the liberty. Oh, you had the liberty to choose mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. the topic, but it was under some sub um, caption. 
which I forgot. But, but, but I maybe forgot I, I could clarify. Um, actually, we deal with the uh, number seven. Yeah, They're different yeah. kind of sevens mm -hmm. because um, we have seven uh, topics, which actually, Matthias, you kind of chose uh, the headlines. You kind of chose those topics are always a field of two uh, uh, terms. And, and you yeah. chose out of our uh, work. So that just give an example so people have an, have an idea. For so instance, uh, we have poles and fields. Poles and fields or, or yeah. folding uh, and, and landscape or continuity and ambivalence. Um, so these uh, headlines were kind of uh, your uh, uh, try to, to organize the topics and you also selected out of our works uh, those projects yeah. which kind of could fit or kind of could relate best to those topics, although they are always cross-references. Yeah. And then you and, um, I forgot her name, uh, wrote uh, introductions to each of the topic, very ah, precise, Patricia, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. um, um, very precise and wonderful uh, introductions to those topics. But that for us that wasn't enough, we wanted kind of also to have a kind of a cosmos <laughs> of satellites uh, circling around that. So then we invited uh, authors like you, uh, Christian, to write something where we actually gave the freedom uh, and, and, and they suggested yes, a topic. I think you assigned poles and fields to me? No, no, no. No? <laughs> no. There was, uh, maybe I chose it. As maybe you... Yeah, there was yeah, maybe election. the election. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. give a brief yeah. explanation yeah. of your yeah. article as we have you mm -hmm. here. We just wanted you in the book. <laughs> 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 So we had this additional kind of uh, uh, content, content so, yeah. and, and views. Uh, yeah. So it was not only the, the topics uh, Matthias figured out and, and organized. Yeah. And yes, for sure, I agree there are cross-references because some projects could be put in a, in a yeah. different topic or not, but it's always yeah, that's, the... That's a big deal always. Yeah, uh, um, which project belongs to which uh, topic. And you're completely right. There are many uh, projects that could fit in various different uh, mm -hmm. topics. And then you have to decide uh, in which topic it fits the best. The best. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was, um, that's hard work, I must confess, um, to, to do that uh, attribution. And luckily, the architects accepted most of it. They uh, shifted my proposal just a little oh, bit yes. uh, <laughs> from here to there. Mm -hmm. But I was really surprised that you accepted it to, I don't know, 80, 90 percent. And as for um, the, um, the wording of the topics themselves, that's a bifold structure. There you have uh, always the, um, the to select between that, uh, the title is quintessential. <laughs> so if the title doesn't work, nothing works, mm -hmm. and it really has to be to the point. So you have the, to decide either you are doing uh, one word uh, uh, titles or you are doing bifold titles. That's what we selected here, or you are doing. Uh, any or uh, whatever titles, um, but uh, then you have to think these are more than uh, one topics, so it takes quite an amount in the book and it has to be uh, workable in terms of graphic design. So if you have long titles, uh, it simply doesn't look good. And then the authors, of course, you're talking about it and trying to invite uh, friends and colleagues who dealt with the work or who you uh, want to deal with the work and force them to deal with it. And uh, yeah, I think we had quite a good uh, selection between scholars, scientists, colleagues, 
So there are architects, there are scientists, there are uh, uh, literary scientists, um, and uh, representatives from several other And other Chong is a philosopher, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But I think if I can say something to that, I think this kind of duality of the of the terms or of the titles or this 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 bifold, let's say, system in here, and that is not so clear that we, which project belongs to the to the one title or maybe to the other. I think that clearly reflects on how we understand architecture, and therefore therefore we we still think that this is so important that we could exactly rely on this concept and that we of course developed all together in our debate but there was a there was also a critical and we we also relied on your critical reflection on that with with those titles because of course we were very happy that that were, that you brought in additional bifold titles because one of the starting points in our architecture was always with this what Christian mentioned the like poles and fields that means we, we, we always saw our architecture between those between two entities somehow yeah and and what what could happen in in, in somewhere in between mm -hmm. and what kind of tension is kind of created or to bind of course it was a bit maybe derived from a magnetic field or magnetic poles or whatever but it was always for us that was just a metaphoric uh, aspect of how we how we understand architecture, and that, that but means. But it's not only metaphoric. No, it's not metaphoric. It's physically, it's it's, physically it's, feasible. It's also physically feasible, of course. It's and, and this is maybe this kind of uh, scientific, let's say, approach to our kind of architecture. And it's all, all also coming from an from a philosophical approach that that there, that in philosophy mm -hmm. or in ontology we we know this kind of duality systems. Uh, it's a wonderful keyword. If so, you keep talking yeah. about that, uh, because I was going to ask you about. No, no, because I, I think that, that that refers perfect. But and also wanted to elevate kind of also Matthias' contribution that it was so important for us that we not always kind of self-reflecting what mm -hmm. we're doing, so that we get a reflection also from people around. And as we did in the book, we, it was very very important for us to, as Christoph mentioned, to have the satellites around us with the freedom to, to contribute to the book and to, to elevate specific topics that, of course, kind of were related to, to topics we were interested in, but th this, is, this is how we understand the complexity of our, of our work at all. It's not a monolinear, it's not a monofunctional thing, it's, all, it's always something that is, that is layered in, in, in several cases, either it's, it's layered on the on the approach of meaning, that means it's not a, it's not a very clear and, and standalone thing how, how the things are meant and, and this is going through all our work and therefore we, we also chose the title finally as tension in space, that, that means all the projects and even how, how our spaces work, that this is an in-between status, we, we always see the, there this kind of complexity in our work that the things you can understand a little bit from that aspect or maybe even from the other aspect and it, it is a kind of an open system in the way how you treat it, how you read it, how you act, how you perform in the spaces this is an important thing how we, how we want to create our architecture and we want to enable the users of our architecture exactly to do that, to, to use the spaces like a, ro a ruler on a, on a sound machine or, or whatever, how you can adjust the, the, mm -hmm. the space due to the, to the potential we want to create. And the, and the potential is the most important thing for us. And I think therefore this kind of, let's say, potential in this in-between status or this kind of suchness and the otherness mm -hmm. uh, that could be at the same time the one thing and the other thing, which of course is, an, is a philosophical and ontological question, but also a question of nature science, maybe Christoph can talk a little bit about these different kinds of statuses and so on. And therefore, I think what, what Matthias, he, 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 we felt completely understood by him, mm -hmm. how we understand architecture and how the, then he created these this, this titles and also how he ordered the, 
projects within this book. So, so we all learned a lot from each other, of course, which is the ideal output. But I also wanted to add, um, after the super tough work of defining the topics, uh, then comes the reward for uh, the editor, uh, because then he is allowed uh, to write the, or forced even, uh, to, to write the introductions to those topics. These are one or two pages uh, texts, uh, and that's a really um, revolving challenge. But then you can let out everything and uh, explain um, with all your historic or cultural historic knowledge um, how those, um, how those uh, uh, bipolar structures developed uh, from, I don't know, uh, modernism till today in one contribution. I even started, I think, with uh, the beginning of the world. So uh, that's <laughs> for a historian, that's really fun to write. But for a theologian, it's, it's Theology. important. Yeah, Theology, is very important. <laughs> Theology is very important. The, the birth of the earth. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just fun. No, it's no, just no, fun. But it's, it's on the fun. one hand, it's a very, it's a good uh, yeah. overview, those introductions. And on the other hand, they are very condensed. So it's yeah, both. They are too condensed. No, I don't even too, understand them myself anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it should be longer and more easily but uh, we didn't have so much space, so that's uh, an old problem of uh, super smart authors that they are trying to press all their knowledge in uh, two paragraphs and that's not very smart of course, but uh, one is trying to uh, mediate it and I have to mention also I only wrote half of those introductions, topical introductions, the other half wrote Patricia, Chon Patricia Chonka uh, and they are really beautiful. And she chose a completely different aspect. Uh, I don't even know how I should uh, describe that. So not so much cultural, historic, uh, but rather contemporary and related to the work. And that's a very beautiful um, alternative, I think. So um, we were lucky that uh, we had actually two editors um, I did the first half, and the second half was finished by Eva Gutmann, my colleague, who cannot join us tonight. Um, and also those introductions were written 50% by me and 50% by Patricia. And then we also had, of course, the um, essays. I would finally go over to, um, in order to a little bit not only talk about the book, I mean it's both, book and work, and it floats uh, uh, in, in and out, but could you tell us about your uh, liberty, about your topic, about your article, in order to dive in a little bit uh, deeper into the... The geometry work. Yes, aspect. the geometry. Yeah, but <coughs> well, also one could add uh, maybe an answer to the question of your own perception of uh, Peter Kaufmann's work after you wrote that piece. Because yeah, uh, also, yeah. <laughs> before you started, did you have a different image uh, no. compared to the no. one afterwards? No. 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 I, I wrote about Pichler Trautmann 30 years ago, mm -hmm. for the first time probably, or 25 years ago. I observed her work very closely, so I was not really surprised. You were familiar with it. I was it. familiar with it. I and just, let me just, for the, for the audience, I would yeah. recommend everybody, uh, in order to understand your work, uh, deeply and closely to check out the, the, your uh, single family houses. I have the feeling, that the old ones, the new ones, I have the feeling that you really in the close examinations of your uh, single family houses one gets your uh, idea in a, in a very clear in a very clear way. And I guess you... Yeah, this is part of my article. Yeah. So ah, it, yeah. it actually starts with the importance of geometry for architecture, which is banal. So as mathematics is the foundation of natural sciences, geometry and descriptive geometry is the basis for architecture in the 18th and 19th century. And um, if you look at the single family houses of Pichler and Taubmann, you see a very different geometry developing there from the classical geometry, which is also banal. But what I think then is interesting that the best project, in my opinion, can be described as large single-family houses. 
So for example, Eisenstadt, this, this has the granularity of a single family house with large spaces and smaller spaces, but it is a 20 meter high building. It gets more problematic in the case of uh, repetitive functions, repetitive structures, like housing, like office spaces. There I'm more critical about the approach. I think there is, it's hard to find an answer from geometry for these, from the geometry that explains and forms the whole building uh, that this geometry should look different in some way. It has to accept uh, the seriality of the elements. And this is something which is hard to achieve. So in this aspect, there is partly a criticism of the work of Peter and Tartman in this text, and I was very happy that this was possible. So maybe it's an option to discuss it further. In our... Not here, this will take... No, no, this will take <laughs> you write another book, <laughs> you do the second book. Of... Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and you agreed on his... On, on yeah, his I, think, I think this is quite a perfect analysis. I mean, we, 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 I think we can confess somehow that we have maybe a bit difficulties in, in be, being, uh, let's say, sophisticated in, 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 in housing. And we d we try to do our best, but this is this is always a kind of moments where we where we a little bit struggle in that because this kind of ge geometric and and if and and it is all all the time when we try to 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 work on that and and bring in a bit more than the the array of classical typology. Of course, we failed the competitions. I mean, we recently, and, and this is really the case. And 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 we uh, recently, I don't know. If we have to tell the story. We we had just such a, such a good kind of a comment in the in the in the documentation of the jury. Everything was fine, but as because we did we did a shifted angle in this in our project, and therefore is not is not good enough. And. It, but this is exactly sometimes what they really use. If you go through all our projects, let's say things that are not rectangular, not, not linear, they try to deviate and then open things. And in, in opening things, you get space, spatial aspects into, into the, the geometry. Then, then, then we are criticized if, we, if we're going to do that in this kind of, let's say, classical arrangements of, of housing typologies. And we always, we always fail this, com <laughs> not always, but most of the times we fail this kind of competitions. And this is a, really a thing we, I don't know. I think Christian means something different. Because I'm very aware what, what you are talking about and what you were saying about the single family homes. Because, um, of course, uh, the, the scale of a, f uh, of, of a single family home is, uh, is very, uh, is, is, uh, very good f for um, kind of exploring a uh, new strategy or a philosophy. For instance, the so-called folding, which I'm so <laughs> delighted of, um, because <clears throat> it shows the power of architecture to collapse uh, um, opposing fields into each other and and make uh, and kind of heal differences, make things at the same time possible. Um, and you can show that in, in in a small scale, of course, in, in a very good way. Because when, when you maybe you do such a fold, you 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 have. A a single space within that fold. So there's, let's say, a living room and a, a, a dining room, whatever, and that's it. You you have those. Uh, um, you have you have the, the the floor, the ceiling, the the wall, and so on and so forth. Uh, coming to a bigger scale, like office building, you make a fold, a huge fold, and then you have to fit in cubicles of offices into it, and then maybe you don't read it anymore because it's not that free space anymore. And then here maybe there are sometimes conflicts with your strategy, and, and that's where we tried, maybe Christian not always uh, is uh, um, this uh, kind of reading it uh, in the same way as we do, we try to add other strategies so we don't stick with one idea and that's also um, um, Matthias' different topics. Yeah. Uh, of course, a lot of more uh, topics. 
and they are used to, to cope with other problems, architectural problems of large scale, of superpositions of different functions and so on and so forth. But of course there are some conflicts uh, when, when you and, uh, stick closely to one, one, one topic and yeah. Yeah, of course, but, but then sometimes we, I think we, especially in housing projects, but then we a little bit try to, to escape from, from that, how could I say, cage, that, that there's an array of things, and we, we try to, to bring in that in a, maybe on a more urban strategy, and how we create the, the outdoor spaces, and how the overall, let's say, figure in these housing buildings then is, is created or even in, in some aspects at an, let's say, uh, uh, a foyer space which we try to inscribe then we... But, but this, is, this is a bit the, the, the conflict of, of that, what we how, we... how we tested and exercised this kind of very early spatial mm -hmm. strategies in, in terms of po poles and fields or foldings and so on and so forth. And this is that sometimes is difficult with this, as I said, with this housing projects or all the, the compressed programs. But yeah, I think we'll, we'll get along with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christian, you, uh, in one of your emails, you wrote me you should have mentioned Helmut Richter as an influence. So now I, where I, I would like to get to the point to your uh, rich background and to your rich uh, and to your different backgrounds, not only in, uh, in terms of interests in natural science and in, in theology, but you also were um, really educated um, in, in a diverse way. I mean, you both were at the master class of Wilhelm Holzbauer, but you studied also with Richter, or you were uh, at Richter. Um, assistant at Richter, mm -hmm, yes. then you have been in, 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 the, in the States at the GSD, so you got that influence. And um, you were here under different uh, people, under different architects like uh, Berthold. So we have all these, these influences. And I, I saw a, a, a YouTube or it was an interview where you um, mentioned you, once the Riker building will be finished, it would be your dream to stand atop the, the Riker in Innsbruck. You would right. stand atop the building and see the Sprungschanze of Hadid. So you have tons of, uh, tons of um, interests, of backgrounds, of educations, all merged into two people working with each other. So I am was uh, kind of amazed when you said, oh, I forgot, I forgot about Richter. Um, where would you yourself uh, position, or maybe, uh, Matthias, you, you could... Um, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's more interesting for you. <laughs> yes, it, I think it's, it's really with such a, um, a rich background interest. Um, yeah, I think, I think we have not to forget Holzbauer, because Holzbauer, mm -hmm. on the one hand side, was such an important teacher for us, and he always also gave, and at our time, somehow the freedom to mm -hmm. develop our own. Mm -hmm. But in what way was but, he? But he wa because he was, it was so clear that architecture is about spaces, they are going to be built. Mm -hmm. this, this was, this mm -hmm. was very, very clear, and this kind of, this kind of also, as he called himself, a pra pragmatism what he did. Mm -hmm. And it, we, we, we really adored him because I think he was the only one who could draw a, a competition freehand in perfect scale, each dimension, each room, everything fitted. Mm -hmm. So he didn't need any construction tools, mm -hmm. he, could, he could draw it from freehand. And it was very clear that, that, that he was so passionate about, about spaces and about how spaces interact with each other and I think this this was also something we, we, were, we were always interested in. Now we, on the, at the same time, when we started already, did this kind of, as you call it, father mort or father <laughs> murder or something <laughs> like this. We, because we, I, I think we, we clearly understood what, what he tried, how, how he understood architecture with this kind of spatial approach. But at the same time, we had a little bit of a diverse, let's say, formal and uh, also geometric interest. I mean, I was very interested in the New York Five at that time, 
Alfred, this, uh, Richard Meyer and early Michael Graves and things, also Peter Eisenman, and all about this kind of phenomenal transparencies, this layering of spaces. And, and so I think the, the most important thing, what we, what we all, always did in our life, that we considered architecture as a learning journey. That, that means from, from this very mo moment on when we started here in the, in the studio and getting to know architecture, we always tried to learn on the one hand side from each other and also what, what was around us or any kind of satellites and, and therefore I think it was also crucial at the same time challenging but also crucial that we, we, we had to reflect the things from coming from the people we, we work together. I mean, now I've, I've, I've I worked 15 years with Zaha that, that, that couldn't pass me without, without leaving any, any, tra any traces mm -hmm. in behind. It, it was necessary to, to kind of uh, reflect on, on that kind of architecture, but on the fundamentals of the architecture, there was not so, so apart from that what Holzbauer thought. Architecture is about spaces. Mm -hmm. It's not about social design or descriptions of actionism or whatever it is. Sorry to say that, yeah. but uh, but uh, and, and, and I think it was the same also with with, with, with Sejima and this is uh, of course for me this is a kind of continuous challenge on the on the one hand side but at the same time it, it always it always enriched my own understanding of what architecture as a space could be or should be and I think Christo should <laughs> so his own his own context yeah. coming. But, but let me add something regarding Holzbauer. Of course, he was a pragmatist, but not only, he was very aware uh, that um, the discourse of architecture and teaching architecture must be more than just designing buildings yeah. that will be built, etc., or that can be yeah. built. Uh, and uh, therefore, I remember very much um, uh, many, many years ago a faculty meeting when uh, we decided or when he uh, proclaimed uh, in that meeting that uh, he will um, he will hire now uh, one or two new assistants and uh, one of them was you and uh, he was extremely proud of you and he <laughs> said, I never heard that this is a yeah, here the story <laughs> first time <laughs> now I've got a really good guy He's not only an architect, he's also a theologist. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that we need that. So um, he was aware of that. I mean, he didn't deal with things like that at all. Or yep. am I wrong? I don't know. But, uh, but uh, he knew what he did. Be sure of that. And he was very proud of you. But the first question. And he's still there. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> the first question Holzbauer always asked: What's the basic idea of your project? No, so well, that was the f not yeah. will it be built, but what's the basic idea? Idea. Yeah. Yeah. Idea. And yes. Not the concept. the yeah. idea. The basic idea. And uh, uh, like uh, Ren Kuhl has in the States, he always asked: What is it? What is it? <laughs> so it. That's the basic approach and, and answering your Helmut Richter or your Helmut Richter question, of course, Richter was extremely fascinating and, and he was dealing about how something, uh, some architecture, something is really made, how is it put together and, and these are really basic uh, questions and put together with our the technology at our hands. So not in a classic way, but really using what, what we have. And um, so that, of course, also inspires us. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we are discussing every detail, unfortunately. Still. <laughs> Still <laughs> from, from scratch, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is very, um, um, in terms of, of, of money, very um, uh, not efficient uh, way <laughs> to work, but we still discuss details, yeah. and that's something maybe we learned from from Helmut, mm -hmm. and also using structures with huge spans, which kind of can liberate mm -hmm. you, you in, in plan in organizing. And you also, I heard now, and you also told me when I was uh, with you a, a while ago, you mentioned you you're interested in the space, in formulating the space, and uh, that architecture is a part 
forming the space, about forming complex volumina. And you somehow sense a loss of interest in this basic architecture approach. So I want to ask you how to bring that back. Uh, should we bring it back? Is it kind of an outdated uh, interest? How, what, how should we approach the, the loss you, you sense? Difficult question. I don't know how it's on the on the TU, Christian. But I, I somehow I, f I feel that that many of the discussions are, are very kind of process oriented mm -hmm. and less space oriented. And this is this is what I observe, especially maybe in the in the last years, on the academic field as well as in all these kind of conferences or whatever happens around. And it's rather seldom uh, or. or Possible to to talk about tectonics and spaces and it's and, and, and how they how how they have to be treated that 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 spaces happen and sometimes I know this is a this is a bit polemic and I sometimes use this this maybe this is not a, this is not a correct description but some sometimes if some people tell you about urban activity. And then, then explain to you, take five chairs, put them on the street, mm -hmm. color the street, whatever, in gray or, or in red, and have a table and then people are gathering around and discussing, this is what architecture should, should, architecture. should trigger. Yeah. And, and I, I think this is very valid, of course, definitely, and in and, and, and social interaction and behavioral aspects that is always, it's been very, very important for us. I mean, I dealt with church buildings and, and uh, how you behave in spaces and how space kind of triggers certain behaviors. This is always important. Human behaviors or social interaction in, in any kind is an, is, an, is an important aspect. But I think it's not done with, it's, it, it should have, it should, should, let's say, rely on more complexity and on more tectonics and, and, and spatial properties and less on a, on a descriptive or process-oriented surface, let's say, approach. But this is maybe a little bit my critical approach to that. What, what? I have yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, to to make this short, I yeah. No, no, you can this, take your time, make an explanation for this very fundamental question. No, I completely agree. I'm also more on the object side and less on the process side of architecture because somebody has to take care of the objects in the end and how you put them together is an important cultural position which cannot be or should not be neglected. And I... I would say that our students have to learn to go beyond this dichotomy of object and process and really define also new aesthetics of new processes. And this will become more and more interesting. So if you think of everybody at the TU at the moment is thinking about materials and reuse and recycling and upcycling. So you have, you're not, you're dealing with processes, but you really want to touch things and change things. So there is a new aesthetics that could develop out of these mm -hmm. um, steps. Roswitha, I would have a final question. Yeah. Do we still have time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our final question, uh, I mean, a ob very obvious question. Um, how did you survive and so well survive for all these 30 years? What's your recipe? I think, I think, I mean, 30 years in the office, the, the recipe is, two of the people sitting here, is that we have always a, a team mm -hmm. that kind of, could I, how can I say, ties into this kind of reverberation and this kind of reflection, what, what we're doing. I mean, that's what we definitely should mention. Now we are, as you said, approximately 30 people and we, and it is, it is very, very interesting that I think of that we can we can be proud that we found partners and, and, and people being around us they 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 felt the same passion and ambition and tension maybe about what mm -hmm. and how to do architecture and and then 
of course, some, sometimes we are economically, as Christo said, we are, we are on the edge, but this is, this is important to survive, let's say, economically, but at the same time, we are constantly interested in, in doing interesting, uh, let's say, fantastic spaces and architecture. And if you have a team and, and every, everyone agrees somehow on that and is, 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 is on the way with that kind of passionate approach to architecture as, as, as we always mm -hmm. <laughs> doing, I think this is, this, is the, this is the recipe, I would say. One or the other. Yeah, maybe I would like to add, we developed a kind of culture of dialogue. Yeah. So as you always say, we started but the two of us, and we grew very slowly. And uh, we always kind of, uh, what, what means, we are chatting in English. Appreciation. Appreciate yeah. what uh, uh, the other was saying or, or, or sketching or building. Not that we, uh, that we say, oh, we don't like it or this doesn't work. We, we see something in it, and then we, Integrate it and maybe make something completely different out of it, but we we always uh, kind of integrate the um, um, uh, contributions of it was the two of us. Now it's a bigger team. It was Bartosz and Wolfgang, and and we we can kind of develop a working method where we can. Uh, feed those uh, contributions into a process, and at the, in, in, in its best case, it starts running on, on its on its own. Mm -hmm. um, so there are these kind of fireworks uh, to to the end of the year, Sylvester, where the, those different uh, rockets are mounted on a, on a circle, and and in the best case, they're not the same direction, but they feed into one spinning mm -hmm. and circling. Uh, a process which, at, in the best case, gets its own dynamic, and and for instance, the MDC headquarters was something like like that. It was completely unfeasible, and we thought we would never manage <laughs> that thing. But it started out in the competition that it 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 became a complete dynamic. Which which uh, uh, um, exceeded a lot of what we did before, and and just by those taking on things in a very positive way, even a positive misunderstanding is part of our strategy. I didn't mean that, but when you see that in my sketch, whatever, I think it's even better, and and so that that we tried really to cultivate. So it's about the bifold would be. Tension and dialogue, your recipe, if it's we same. put it into a bifold maybe, version. Yes. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Okay, thank you, I guess. Thank you. Right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe finally. Yeah, finally. Oh, question. finally question. I, I, I want to thank Beryl especially, that she initiated this kind of presentation and this, this panel here, this discussion. Really, we really appreciate it. And, and then we had the opportunity to talk a little bit about the book and how we work together, of course. Thanks also to Roswitha and to Sabine. I know they always in the background doing things. And I think, yeah, where I was around, my colleagues are here. I'm teaching with them for many years. I have, I'm so happy to, I, I can always rely on them. And also having a learning journey, as I mentioned previously, because always getting new aspects and learning even from them. And this, I think, is, is crucial. Architecture is a learning journey, what I said. And it's a kind of a, of a, of a dialogue that, mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is derived from this kind of tension of different heads and poles and whatever it is. Hopefully I didn't forget any, but of course to Christian for joining this, I think it's great. And with Gudrun, I, we had really a nice talk because she was first time in our office, mm -hmm. four or six weeks ago, I think. I mean, we shame on me. We, no, 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 uh, shame on us as well. We didn't have that much contact, but immediately when we were at the table, there, there was kind of a, Christoph also explained like a fireworks of, nice. of, 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 of notions and aspects and terms and things. And we, I think we found together really mm -hmm. quick what, what, what the talk could be, so thanks to to you as well. No questions? Better. Yeah, maybe one question. Um, 
because you talk about dialogue and learning environments. Do you, does the book have repercussions on your design process now? Like, I mean, it's, I think it was published last year and you said you worked on it for two or three years. And now Matthias coined these terms, for example, and is it now in a reverse way that if you start a design process, you have certain quotes or certain uh, interpretations by authors or also the, the lenses um, Matthias intro introduced in your in your mind or in your in your process or is it more like that it's maybe even too fresh and it's more like a, a chapter closed and no, not closed, but I think we look at our old projects more closely again. That yeah. is one learning, <laughs> very simple one, but... Yeah, exactly. Mm. But that, that was a very, very major aspect also what Christa, Christian was mentioning, let's say reflecting back to the, to the early years when, when we started and, and sometimes we also do kind of a short session in the office and talking with, uh, with our team all around and then sometimes we're coming back to those projects either, either from the concept side, let's say what, what could be the basic idea, what is it as an idea and at the same time on the detail aspect because there we develop not really so many details that, that, that we constantly want to bring them into the, the projects, the contemporary projects as well. So as I said, it, it's it's always it's always a kind of a reflection, and, and we, we 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 see this also as a kind of a matrix where we can maybe dive in, and but then it's not that we say okay 